Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. And today we have the first of FIFA 20, the first OP uh, squad builder. We're going to look at a couple squads today, and we're going to have many videos like this, looking at some OP cards um, and just kind of putting together some starter squads that look very meta and very overpowered for the start of FIFA 20. Now, we're going to have kind of FIFA 20 in mind. Obviously, this is the demo right here. I played the closed beta as well. So I'm going to kind of keep that type of gameplay in mind and keep those statistics relevant to this game. So you're going to hear me talk about a few things today where I think um, could be important inside of this year's game um, in terms of different statistics that you might want to watch out for when you're looking at some of these overpowered cards for your starter teams and as you build up. And uh, yeah, just kind of taking that into into account as well. Now, obviously, these teams are going to be pretty cheap. The teams that I am building in these squad builders today are probably in the range of around twenty thousand coins or less. Most of these cards should be in about the one k to two k range. Maybe one card be about three or four k. But other than that, these should be some pretty cheap teams. And does this is. Me showing you these teams doesn't mean you have to go out and build this exact team. It just kind of gives you some ideas of what some overpowered cards might be. So let's get into this first one right away. So today I'm doing leagues. Today I'm doing two leagues. We have Premier League and the Serie A or Calcio A. Uh, I don't know what it's actually called anymore. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, but we have two teams here today. The first one is the Premier League. Now this is going to be a very basic starter team, as you can tell. We're talking like 20,000 coins here. I think the most expensive player out of this team is probably going to be Ndombele or Fred. Actually, I'm pretty guaranteeing you that it's going to be Ndombele. He's going to have a lot of hype, especially with Sissoko. Um, but I wanted to make a very, very cheap team for you guys. This should be a team that everybody could afford at the beginning of the game. And as you look across here, I have a 4-3-3 formation. We have some pacey wingers. Uh, because in my experience, uh, this is the first thing I want to talk about. In some of your teams this year, I think pace is very key up on the wings and at your defensive outside backs because you see Yedlin here with 82 and Angelino at 85. In this game of FIFA Ultimate Team, you can actually outrun people. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it in the demo when you've been playing a game and you have Mane streaking down the wing on a through ball and... You know, I even had a situation where Van Dyke was outrun by somebody with 90 plus pace last night um, when I was playing the demo. So um, that is something that I think is very important. So that's why you see some pace up here in the top um, with Delafleu and Pulisic, and then again down here with Yedlin and Angelino. I think both of these cards are going to be great for starter teams on the outside back positions in a Premier League squad. Um, so I wanted to touch on that. Having pace, and I think that's going to make wingers very good this year as well. A 4-3-3 formation like this, you might see a lot of people rocking that this year because you have the ability to go out wide. Crossing the ball in, I don't think it's been shown if it's super duper meta yet, uh, and I'm not like a, a gameplay pro, so take my opinions as you will. Uh, but up here at striker, I do have Jimenez. Now, I, wa I want to mention uh, one thing. Foothead. Um, Foothead, yes, Foothead, FIFA 20. Foothead has in-game statistics for all these players. So if I want to look up Raul Jimenez, and this is what I wanted to show with uh, you guys as well. Raul Jimenez, um, six foot two, six foot two, and a four-star weak foot, and uh, he's got some pretty good ratings out here for finishing. This is going to be a pure finishing card. 81 heading, 82 stamina, 80 aggression. So he's pretty strong. His agility and balance, his balance is not good. But he's got solid finishing and he's decent pace. This is why I chose this card. He is tall. He's going to be able to get shots. Um, but he's also going to be able... He could create some shots on his own, you know? Uh, he's not super unusable that he's only going to be able to stand there and head the ball in. But I think having somebody that's of a little bit higher stature, a little bit bigger body with some physical, some strength, is going to be important up there at striker. Because you have those two fast guys out on the wings. If you had three fast guys up top, yes, you could burn people on a counterattack, but I think having some physicality presence up top is going to be important as well. Um, and, of course, you can always have a, a super sub on the bench. Another person you could throw in a striker is Callum Wilson. 
uh, 87 pace, 78 shot, 75 physical, and 77 dribbling. So he would be a little speedster out there for you at striker if you wanted him. And then Wesley, uh, I just put this card in here because he's very similar to Jimenez, except this man has 95 strength. Have you guys seen this card? Striker Wesley. He has 95 strength right here. Look at that. Crazy. 95 strength, 88 physical overall with 83 aggression and 81 stamina, 84 shot power. Uh, but the rest of his card is, is very average. So I just want to throw him in there for that. If you really want a big, beefy striker up top, that might be your guy. But moving on to the midfield, I went with three very overall rounded players. Obviously, this Amadou card, uh, I thought that's, that's a really solid card in my opinion. 71 pace, 76 defending, 81 physical. Just from a faced cards perspective, he looks like a great center defensive mid to me. Um, and that's why I chose this card. He's got a little bit of pace, but he's got the good defending stats. Okay dribbling and passing as well for a card of this uh, rating. I think that's important. If he was to play an actual CDM role, it's, which even in this formation, I would probably have him like set back or whatever, you know. Uh, and then Fred is an all-around good center midfielder. And then... I mean, he'd be, he'd be able to go forward as well. But then Ndombele, I think it's going to be somebody who's very important for squads this year because he's got 87 dribbling. And that's the other thing that I wanted to mention. Pretty high dribbling on uh, Pulisic and Delofeu. Because, have you guys seen it? I'm sure you guys have seen it, but the, the L1-R1, the, the crab walk, as they call it, uh, from FIFA 17, very easy to... Uh, avoid tackles and to pull the ball and kind of maneuver around the pitch with that dribble skill move. I'm sure you're going to see a lot of people start to do tutorials on that on YouTube. Um, so that's why I, I try to pick some higher dribbling players, especially for those guys that are going to be carrying the ball for your team. Now with the gold cards like these, anything over 80 dribbling is going to be good. Um, and I think Ndombele has pretty high agility and balance. Yeah, so 83 agility, 86 balance, and 86 ball control, and 88 dribbling for that stat alone. He's going to be able to maneuver that ball very well between his feet. That's going to be perfect for that. And then he's got really solid passing stats. That's what I was looking for in this card. Good stamina, good dribbling, good short and long passing. Uh, so he's going to be able to shoot those passes out, get balls up to your wingers, maybe an air through ball or something like that to get those wingers through. And that's going to be huge for a guy like Andombele. And that's why I picked some of these more all-rounded center midfielders. Um, you could probably swap out um, maybe Fred or Amadou for maybe a more attacking one. Or you could play Fred as CDM if you wanted a more attacking presence. Or depending on your formation uh, in the midfield as well. Then moving on to the defense. I talked about the outside backs already. I think those are very two, option, very, two very good options for Premier League starter teams. Then I chose Lindelof and Ake. And again... I'm, you know, everybody for center backs, they look at pace, defense, and physical. I think you need to look outside of that as well. In this game, I have Ake at 72 dribbling and Lindelof at 73 dribbling. I think both of these guys are going to be very good at the start of the game because Lindelof has a pretty solid card. Um, the, the defense stuff is pretty good, uh, but I like his agility and balance as well. 67 agility and 62 balance for an 81 rated center back is not bad at all. And let's look at Nathan Ake's, uh, about the same, 73 agility and 69 balance. Uh, 86 jumping on this card, he's 5'11", uh, medium high work rates, which is which is definitely what we want for him. And I think Lindelof is medium high as well. That's very important. And uh, so both those guys look very good to me. 83 composure for a center back as well on Lindelof. So I'm a fan of those two guys. And when you're choosing center backs, don't just look at the pace, defending, and physical. Take a look at the dribbling and passing statistics as well because that's important for um, knowing how that player is going to feel in the game with agility and balance. And then finally, a goalkeeper, we have a nice little non-rare Heaton card, uh, 81 positioning, 82 reflexes. And I think the most important stat here, we're going to look at this in the second squad as well, is positioning. Um, I think positioning is going to be the most important goalkeeper stat this year. Um, that's just in my opinion. So that's why I chose Mr. Heaton. So this squad, all in all, I think is going to cost you around twenty to 30,000 coins, 30 at max. So I'm thinking 25k. This would be a very nice starter team. The only, the only position in this team that I'm a little unsure about would be Jimenez. Uh, this is something you might have to kind of mess around with. Jimenez just looks like a nice overall 
the striker that can finish and also has height and strength on his side. Um, so, but you, this would be the position that I would want to change out depending on how you play. If you like a, a pacey striker, throw a pacey striker in there. Um, but I think him in has to be a decent shout. So this is my Premier League 25k starter squad, and then on to the Serie A. Now this one's going to be, I think, around the same price range. Could be a smidge more, but I think the Serie A looks pretty solid this year for starter teams. Um, and I want to go through some of these players in here right now. I have the 4-1-2-1-2-2 setup going right now, so we're going to play a little bit more through the middle um, with this setup. Uh, and I will start from the back this time. Buffon with an 83 rated card with 91 positioning. Again, I chose this card because it's 83 rated. It has okay stats for an 83 rated card. But the 91 positioning, I could very easily see this Buffon card being uh, the Butland of, of FIFA 17 or, you know, like the next OP player. I think this Buffon card could be very overpowered. Um, with that 91 positioning because that stat is so far and above everything else on this card that it, it sticks out a ton. So I'm curious to see how this card actually turns up in game. I think it could be very overpowered, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, but he's a great goalkeeper. I'm expecting this card probably be about three to 4,000 coins right away, hopefully a little bit less. Um, one of the most expensive players in the squad, actually, but I think it's worth it for the 91 positioning. I think it'll be a very overpowered card. Moving to the center backs now, Murillo and Bastos. These guys are always good starter uh, starter squad players in FIFA every year. Bastos with a very nice card, 79 defense, 75 physical. I believe he's medium high. Murillo as well. Now these guys don't have as high as agility and balance or uh, dribbling and passing as those other center backs did. But they do look like very solid center backs. A little more pace than, than Ake as well. I think those guys had like 70 pace. But those look like solid starter team center backs. And then in the Serie A, you have plenty, plenty of options to upgrade. You have Mano Loss, which was, uh, excuse me, he has a nasty card this year. 82 pace, 86 physical, and 81 defense. And then Koulibaly as well. Looks very good. Scrini R has a, a big boost this year as well. So both of these cards look all these cards look pretty good, and, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity to upgrade a Serie A team. That's why I'm, I'm pretty heavy on Serie A this year. I might start out with a team kind of like this. Um, so center backs, you can definitely upgrade pretty easily. Moving on to the outside backs, Theo Hernandez and Malkut. Mal, Malkut? I don't know how to say his name. But uh, the only problem I see here with these guys is this Mal, Malkut guy. He might be the only right back that you use besides Florenzi in the Serie A. So there could be a little bit of inflation with this card because there's not a ton of Serie A right backs and the French right backs as well. This guy could be in a lot of teams at the start, at the start of the game. He has a very good card and there's not too many French right backs other than Lala, maybe one other guy, but uh, yeah, there's just not a ton of French right backs. So this card's price could be a little bit inflated. All, all in all, I think he's a sick, uh, sick right back. And then Theo Hernandez, again, very pacey, good physical, decent defense, but has the a little okay passing and dribbling uh, as well to get you down the wing. Now moving into the, the midfield, Kessie looks like a monster. Um, I'm going to be honest. Kessie looks like an absolute beast. He's been a beast in years past, and I think he's going to be a beast this year. I don't know if he would play him at center mid or a CDM, but he's six foot. He's high, high. He has 95 stamina, 87 strength, solid agility and balance. Just a very all-round chill, and, and not chill, but um, a, a well-rounded card. Very beast um, card that you have there. Nice little green link as well to Piatek and Hernandez with the Milan links. Go over here to Malinovsky, um, another very good card. We'll look him up. Because this is important for you guys to see the in-game stats for a lot of these cards. If you did not know, Footbin has the in-game stats. 90 shot power and 84 long shots. So if there's some way that you can you can crack some shots in this game with an outside-the-box center midfielder, this is your guy. Pretty good passing. Decent dribbling as well. Very all well-rounded. Four-star, four-star as well, according to according to um, Footbin or Foothead. So that's going to be a nice card for your midfield. And then Kuka as well looks like a solid CDM. Lacking a little bit on the pace. But everywhere else, he looks he looks great. So you sacrifice a little bit of pace there for a solid defender. Moving up to the top, I have two very different striker combinations here um, in terms of Piatek and Lazagna. Very different strikers. 
uh, Lasagna with a 90 pace. That's going to be your through ball. That's a through ball from Correa to Lasagna. Boom. He's chucking here. He's chucking through the middle. You're going to throw that uh, that threaded through ball in there um, from Correa, who's got uh, a very well-rounded card. Again, pretty high dribbling, good pace, passing and, and shot are there. Um, a, a great center attacking mid card. And then Lasagna is per Lasagna. Wow, Lasagna is perfect for just burning defenses and finishing in a straight line fashion. And then Piatek, um, I want to look up this guy's stats because, you know, he's not going to be the, I don't think a ton of people are going to want to use this card right away, but I'm thinking that you might want to, based on these statistics right here, 86 positioning and 86 finishing. If you get the ball inside the box with this guy, you find a consistent way to finish in FIFA 20, that's going to be your guy. He's going to finish, he's going to do it well. Um, I think he has a four-star weak foot. He does a three-star weak foot. And uh, medium, medium, he's a righty. But you get it on his right foot, you bang one inside the box, I bet you it's going in. That's a very, very good-looking card. All right, boys. So hopefully you guys enjoy these two squads, 25K Serie A team and a 25K Premier League squad. If you have any um, uh, mentions, honorable mentions of cards that you think could have made this team, let me know down below. We're going to have more videos of this coming in the future. This one was a little longer because I wanted to talk you through how I feel about dribbling and pace and some of the defending statistics as well. So if you enjoyed the video, smash a thumbs up on it. Of course, recommend me some more players to look at uh, in the comments down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new, boys. FIFA 20 is almost here. It's, it's almost here. I'm freaking excited. Uh, I'm excited to actually get on my account and start going, especially on the PS this year, all right? If you enjoyed the video again, smash the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.